I am continuing my video series on the Badlands. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. This is supposed to be a map of fur trading posts in South Dakota in the early 1800s. According to official history, modern South Dakota began as a fur trading post. It's interesting that all forts are set up along Missouri River, almost as a wall or separation of the Badlands from the rest of the state. In the mythology of the Sioux natives, there is a figure called Wackenyan. The ancient German word Wack, Wagon, usually referred to ships or flying vehicles, and Dakota is ancient German for the gods or people of God. Wackenyan is translated as Thunder, Thunderbird, and Sky Spirit. In their legends, Wackenyan is associated with the Badlands of Dakota. When Wackenyan flies, it makes the sound of thunder, and its eyes shoot lightning. The Wackenyan is said to be the enemy of the horned serpent named Ingtei. According to the Lakota natives, on the morning of a planned attack, the Great Spirit, dismayed by such blatant disrespect, caused a powerful storm to formulate in the skies above. Dark clouds blocked out the sun, while Wackian's thunderous crack rumbled across the horizon. Lightning struck the lands, and fire erupted from the depths of the earth. A great chasm splintered the lands, swallowing the disobedient malcontents, and with them, all the lush grasslands, abundant streams, plants and animals, leaving behind the barren wasteland known as the Mako Sika, Badlands. Forever reminding future generations the cost of hubris and greed. The strongest proof of history faking we have for South Dakota is this. The Wikipedia page timeline of South Dakota lists events there in the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th and 15th century. Europeans arrived in the 16th century. In the 1600s, it was part of an English territory called Rupert's Land. In the 1700s, it was part of a French territory called La Louisiane. And yet, the very first traveler's report comes from 1823. And there are no drawings, paintings or pictures to be found prior to the mid-1800s. Here's a page of historical maps of South Dakota. They all begin around 1890. Why? Historians tell us that history has been ongoing for a thousand years, and Europeans have been there for 500 years, but there are hardly any maps or pictures to prove it. Most maps of Louisiana end in Minnesota, omitting South Dakota. Most maps of Rupert's Land omit anything outside of Canada. Old maps of America often omit anything west and northwest, including Dakota. Sometimes the space is left blank, as in this map, other times it's called Land Unknown, Land of Giants, and Land of Cannibals. Do you understand how unlikely it is that these parts remained unknown for hundreds of years? Much more likely that they were inhabited by the enemy, from the settler's perspective. I found only this map of Louisiana that included the area in question. We see Missouri River branching off of the Mississippi. Where we would expect the Badlands to be, we instead find places called Pania, Paducas, and Padunias. Does it mean Padlands? The Paducas natives are said to have been one of the most brave and warlike tribe of natives. This is from a history website. The Paduca were of an unknown race and language, with habits in many respects dissimilar from any other nation. Instead of being indiscriminately thrown together in a confused mass of lodges, their villages were laid out regularly with streets, which formed squares, as in the modern city. The houses were neatly built, and the Indians, in intelligence and living habits, ranked higher than the more eastern tribes, who were almost continually at war. Little is known of their history after the visits of the French during the first quarter of the 18th century. I took a one-hour Google Maps excursion of the land directly adjacent to the Badlands. What did I hope to find? On the outskirts of a bombed area, we usually find anomalies, because bombings from the air are rarely thorough. I found weirdness everywhere I looked. Had I spent more than an hour on this, no doubt I'd have found much more. I discovered fields shaped or outlined like pyramids, or hinting at pyramids. These locations are viewable from a highway street view perspective. From there, no noticeable elevation is seen. The anomaly is only visible from the air. Either I don't understand modern farming techniques, or we have yet undiscovered pyramids in the plains of South Dakota. 
I found more than a dozen fields that have what I'd call bullet holes, or bomb scatter. Some of these were on what appears to be unused land, others seemed to be part of farms. I imagine rock melting chemicals, some of which might have spilled onto adjacent land, leaving permanent damage. I spotted about half a dozen features that I reckon are bomb impact craters. There's no other way I can explain the lines radiating from them. I later learned that the Badlands were used as a bomb testing range for the US military in World War II, according to Wikipedia. This might explain the impact craters, and also the bullet holes. But I'm skeptical. The area was designated a national monument in 1929. How likely is it that a national park would be used as a bombing range? It's possible that this story was invented to serve as an explanation for all the anomalies we see in the landscape around the Badlands. As usual, we find perfectly straight ancient lines in the landscape, some of which have been repurposed as modern highways. And then there are the things which I won't even bother trying to explain. We see intelligent design, but it serves no modern purpose. I have yet to see anyone come forward to explain it to us. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The natives say the Badlands area was destroyed by a Thunderbird ship from the air. We avoid the area ever since. 1800s travelers said the Badlands look like a destroyed city of castles and palaces. Google Maps shows proof of ancient high-tech activity. The history of South Dakota pre-1820s is almost non-existent, even though there should be drawings, paintings or reports of Louisiana and Rupert's land. The structures in the Badlands don't look natural. In the old days, they were labeled as castles. If someone asked me where should I dig to find evidence of the things you're saying, I'd say start in South Dakota. However, the Badlands were declared a national park, so there won't be any digging going on there anytime soon. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.